We're now at the last major definition of the course. In many ways, this is what the course was working towards. My goal for this course is essentially to do enough linear algebra to make the definition in this video possible. The rest of the course, this week and the next, will be elaborations and examples that use the definition of this video. And in my experience, the majority of applications of linear algebra anywhere in the world relate to this video. So what am I talking about? What am I trying to define? I wanted to find something called an eigenvalue and a related thing called an eigenvector. To that end, I'll assume A is an n by n matrix, V is a non-zero vector in Rn, and lambda is a real number. So here is the definition. The vector V is called an eigenvector of the matrix A with matching eigenvalue lambda if the matrix action on V, AV, has the result of multiplying the vector V by the number lambda. What does this mean? Well, first it means that the direction of the vector is preserved. The matrix A does something to the vector, but it doesn't change its direction. It only changes its length. If lambda is a positive number larger than 1, then A stretches V to a longer vector. Lambda is the factor of the stretch. If lambda is a positive number smaller than 1, then A shrinks V to a shorter vector. Lambda is again the factor of change in length. If lambda is negative, then V is flipped to the opposite direction, possibly also with a stretch or with a shrink, depending on the size of lambda. And there is one last possibility. The vector V cannot be the zero vector, but the number lambda can be zero. If lambda is zero, then A sends the vector V to the zero vector. That is, V is in the kernel of the matrix A. Any vector in the kernel of A is an eigenvector with eigenvalue zero. This definition also captures the ideas of vectors that are collapsed, of directions that are projected down to zero. Finally, if V is an eigenvector in this definition, then all multiples of V are also eigenvectors. I've done the calculation here, and it's basically just linearity. If I have a multiple of V, alpha V, for alpha some non-zero number, then the action is linear, so the scalar can come out. Well, then the action AV produces lambda V, and then, since I am multiplying by two scalars, I can change the order. And the result is that A acting on alpha V sends it to a multiple of itself, lambda times alpha V. Alpha V also fits the definition of an eigenvector. And in this way, I can tell that if a matrix has an eigenvector, we'll have many different eigenvectors by scaling that eigenvector. That's the abstract definition. Let me be a bit more concrete with some examples. The identity matrix doesn't do anything. Every vector is sent to itself. Therefore, every vector is an eigenvector of the identity with eigenvalue 1. Eigenvalue 1 means that the vector is sent to itself, since multiplication by 1 doesn't do anything. Similarly, the zero vector sends every or the zero matrix rather sends everything to zero. Everything is in the kernel of the zero matrix. Any vector you start with gets sent to zero, which is the same as zero times the original, so every vector is an eigenvector with eigenvalue zero. A rotation in R2 has no eigenvectors. No directions are preserved by a rotation. They are all changed by the angle of the rotation. The only exception is the rotation by exactly half a circle, half a turn. This rotation flips all directions, so it means that everything is an eigenvector, and the eigenvalue for all of them is negative 1, because negative 1 is representing flipping the direction. In R3, rotation happens around an axis. So again, most vectors are moved to a different direction unless the rotation is precisely half a turn. However, the axis itself does not move. So any vector directly on the axis is fixed. That means that any vector along the axis is an eigenvector with eigenvalue 1, because eigenvalue 1 means no change. A reflection in R2 has two eigenvalues. There is one direction which is flipped over the line of reflection, the direction that is perpendicular to that line. A vector that is flipped is multiplied by negative 1, so this is an eigenvector with eigenvalue 1. 
but there can also be a vector on the line of reflection itself. These vectors do not move under the reflection. Vectors that do not move are eigenvectors with eigenvalue 1. Multiplying by 1 doesn't do anything, so these vectors are unchanged. Any other vector, something not on the line of reflection or perpendicular to it, gets reflected to some other new direction, not a multiple or a flip of itself. A projection onto a line in R2 also has two eigenvalues, 1 and 0. This is very like the reflection. Anything that's already on the line is unchanged, so those vectors are eigenvectors with eigenvalue 1. The line directly perpendicular to the line of projection is the line that gets sent to 0. All vectors on this line end up at the origin. These are all, all eigenvectors with eigenvalue 0. Any vector that is not on the line, and not directly perpendicular to it, gets collapsed to the line. For these vectors, this is a change of direction, so they cannot be eigenvectors. Now let me consider a dilation matrix in R3. A, B, and C on the diagonal, and zeros everywhere else. A dilation matrix stretches each axis by a factor, the x-axis by A, the y-axis by B, and the z-axis by C. Since, since each axis is stretched, each axis vector is an eigenvector. And I can see this explicitly in the matrix action. If this matrix acts on 1, 0, 0, the output is A, 0, 0, which is A times 1, 0, 0. This is the definition of an eigenvector. It is sent to a multiple of itself. The multiple is this number A, this dilation, di dilation factor for the x direction. In the same way, the y-axis vector is sent to b times itself, and the z-axis vector is sent to c times itself. For most dilations, when a, b, and c are different from each other, these are the only eigenvectors. Other vectors are stretched by different factors in their x, y, and z components, so they end up with new and different directions. These are the basic examples of eigenvectors and eigenvalues, to hopefully give you some idea of what's going on. Already, Eigenvectors say a lot about transformations. A transforma if a transformation is some kind of projection, well, it has to have an eigenvector with eigenvalue 0, since that direction must collapse. To find a reflection, I should look for some combination of flipped and preserved directions, eigenvalues 1 and negative 1. I should not expect rotations to have preserved directions, except for maybe axis directions, that is, the axis of the rotation. And dilations can be understood by their eigenvectors in the axis directions, the x, y, and z axis. I hope these definitions, eigenvalues and eigenvectors, already feel like they have promise, feel that they, they might be able to be pretty useful things. That said, whatever your intuition, I promise that eigenvalues and eigenvectors will succeed it. On some level, it does seem like an innocuous definition. It's just directions that are preserved or possibly flipped or collapsed. It is still amazing to me after all these years, the places that eigenvalues and eigenvectors show up. There are just hundreds of problems in mathematics that boil down to finding the eigenvalues of some matrix. I'm gonna show some of these next week, which will be devoted to the uses and applications of eigenvalues and eigenvectors.